So several people have asked me to create a drawing similar to this one, like an exploded view of your assembly with some call outs and a nice list. And actually with a cut list as well. So it shows you the size of these panels. People have asked me, how do you do that? And can you do it? So I'm going to walk you through it and I'll show you some things. We'll cover all those details here in a second. So let's get started. So I thought what we would do is revisit the base cabinet assembly that we did last time. If you don't have it, it's okay. You can assemble just anything you like. And what I've done is I've already created that exploded view. And you remember to create an exploded view, all you need to do is you go into the assembly workbench and just hit this button here and you say explode radially and then you pull it out to wherever you want it to be so i've already done that and i don't want to waste time showing you that again it's in the other video here's my exploded view and i'll show you what's supposed to happen but i'm going to point out a bug here that's uh, a known bug what we're going to do now is we're going to create a tech drawer page do that by going into tech drawer so i'm going into our tech drawer um, worksheet so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a blank drawing to start with and then what's supposed to happen is if I select this exploded view I go to the tech drawer menu item and I say insert projection group what we're going to find is it'll insert a projection group it's going to be too big so I'm just going to say automatic scale so you can see what it looks like you can see my projection view or my projection group is not the right view it's for some reason it's collapsing that entire assembly into a mess so that's a bug it doesn't work there's or it's a known bug it's been reported on github and so we know that that's an issue with the software and i tried it here i'm on windows 11 and that's what i use for most of the time Obviously, I'm in the latest FreeCAD 1.0 release. I've also tried it in the daily um, update. I think it was two days ago it was updated. I tried that release, still the same. And I tried it on Linux and still the same. And, and identical results, which is probably a good thing that it's all identical. It's consistently wrong. Uh, it's not like random. So that's probably makes it easier for developers to work on but it's definitely a problem so with that being said i can't use this view obviously what it should do is it should do a nice picture of that exploded view and make life really easy so i'm going to show you a workaround now what we can do if i double click my exploded view you can see what it should have looked like i can snapshot this picture and take that with the background and everything into my page i'll show you what that looks like so i'm just going to start the windows snapshot the snipping tool and i'm just going to do a new snip and i'll just snip across here and i'm going to save that and the snipping tool is in windows so you should be able to find it I'm just going to save it as a screenshot. Uh, it doesn't matter what you call it. I'm just going to drop it there. Close the snipping tool. Go back to my page. I'm actually going to say OK to this. OK, so here on my page, if I want to put this in, I just say insert tech draw views, insert a bitmap image, and I'm going to go to that bitmap image and drop it down and then once I do that I can change my scale of that if I want to so I set on custom I can make it a little bit bigger and I can move that around put it wherever I want to put it and of course in tech drawer I can uh, create the balloons for it so I can actually say uh, what this part is with a balloon one two etc etc 
Now that's all well and good. I think it looks good, but I think the colors might make it a little bit difficult when you print it out with a black and white printer, which is what I have. I have a laser black and white printer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can get this out in just an outlined view, because I think that would be better while we're doing this work around. So let's try that. So I'm just going to delete that image for now. And I'm going to go down. These balloons are also elements in the page. So I'm just going to go in and delete those. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back to my assembly and back to my exploded view. And now what I want to see is I want to see the outline of that. So if we look over here, there's a draw style. I can say just draw it in wireframe. Um, so, so you'll get the outline of the shapes. And then what I'm going to do is the background is a bit disconcerting for that picture. So I'm just going to go into my edit and preferences. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to change the background. So it's under display and colors. And I'm going to say a simple color. And I just want to make it a white color. I'm going to apply that. So now I can see my assembly a little bit clearer for that picture. It'll come out a little bit clearer on my drawing. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my snipping tool again. And I'm going to say a new snip. Pick that across there. And I'm going to save that. Again, I'm just going to save it as a screenshot. Close that. Say OK to that. I'm going to go back to my page. And now I'm going to just insert that picture. And I think that looks a little bit better. And remember, we can change our scale here. I think that size is probably good enough. And then what we want is we want to have our list here. So what we're going to do, go back to our assembly. And now we're going to make sure that the assembly is our active object. So we're just going to make sure there's a check mark alongside that. And I'm going to just change my background back because it's not the greatest for looking at stuff. So I'm going to go back to that radial gradient, which is what it normally is. And I'm going to put my view back to as is. Okay, so everything's back the way it was. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a bill of materials. So click on bill of materials. That puts a bill of materials down here. Then I'm going to click on this. And you'll remember I showed you this in another video. And I want to get the name and I want to get the quantity and I want to get, I'm going to call this the number. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move, I want my index to be at the end of that and I want my number to be at the beginning. And so I'm going to say OK to that. So it creates my sides with my quantities, with my index. Everything looks good. Now to get a cut list, what I've done is I've created a macro for that. So there's no command just to say, show me a cut list. So I created a, a macro in Python that allows you to, to do a cut list. So I'm going to do that quickly. And to do that, I just need to go into macro. And then I'm going to run this macro. It's called cut list generator. And when I run that, what it's going to do is it's going to create a file in this, the same place as my file exists with the same name, but it's a .csv file. So I'm going to go and open that CSV file, which will open up into Excel. And when I do that, I open up the file. I now have a spreadsheet that has the information that we need in it. So it has my long side, my short side, back, shelf support, and shelf. So they line up with this. And there's my length, width, and thickness. It also has the quantity as well, but we don't need to repeat that. So I'm just going to copy those with a Control-C. And then I'm just going to come over here. 
what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a spreadsheet. And in that spreadsheet, I'm going to put all my information. So I'm going, I'm going to put in my bill of materials information. So that's the first one, two, three columns. So then from column D, I'm going to put in the information from that spreadsheet. From my bill of materials, I'm going to put in this information. And I'm carefully making sure that everything is lined up the way it should be. Otherwise, we'll have the wrong information. And so now I have all my information. I'm going to just make that middle just because we can. Looks a little nicer. And what we can also do is we can make these guys bold. And I can make the background for these guys a gray color just says go ahead in and I'm gonna make these bold as well just so they stand out and then we'll put our numbers in as we go so we have all our data there now we're gonna go here and we're gonna go back into our tech drawer and I'm gonna just move this down below so you can see what I'm picking here. So I'm picking this one here that has the balloon. So now I have to select my image and I'm going to select the balloon and I'm going to drop it on that side. And I'm going to select another balloon and I'm going to drop it on that side. Select another balloon. I'll drop it right here. Select another balloon. I'm going to drop it right here. And there's also these small pieces here so i'm going to just select that and i'll just select one of them and that gives me my balloons now you probably noticed that my balloon started on number three that's because i already used some balloons earlier to show you some stuff so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just move these around to where i want them to be and you can literally grab the number and then you can just move it and then as i said when you go into these balloons now I can see this balloon is here, and that's my long side. So when I look at my spreadsheet, the long side should be number one. So I'm going to make that number one. So we'll go back into our page, and we'll make that number one. So if you look here, it says text, and we change that to a one. And while we're there, we can change the label if we want to. So the label is balloon right now. I'm going to call it long side, just so I know what label is pointing to what. And then if I look at my spreadsheet, my short side, so I can actually type a one in there. That's my one. My short side is going to be two. My back is going to be three. Shelf support is going to be four. And the shelf itself is going to be five. So let's go back here. Short side which is balloon four, two. I'm just going to change that label to short side. And for three, it's going to be the back. We're going to make that three. I'm going to call this one back. And then this one here that's seven, that's going to be four. And this is shelf support. And then the shelf itself, which is six, is going to become five. One shelf. And there we have all of our parts in the way that we want them. Now, remember, this outline box is not going to be there when we turn it off. So we don't have to worry that that's going right through the five. And now what we want to do is we want to take this spreadsheet. We've saved everything. We have our numbers all in. We know it goes from A1 to F6. So now we're going to add that in at the bottom. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select that spreadsheet. And I'm going to say tech drawer, insert spreadsheet view. 
and it's going to insert it and notice it just plopped it anywhere it wanted to plop it i can just move it around very easily and notice also it just has uh, one entry so what we do is we go to the sheet where it says sheet under the page so this is now the sheet that's here and we tell it where we want it to go so we as we said before it's going to be f6 is going to be our final cell so we're going to go f6 and then when we tab away from that you'll see my whole sheet is in there and that gives me my sheet and again this is uh, scaled so i can custom scale it i want it to be a little bit bigger that probably be fine. That image part there is going to disappear when I turn off the pieces here. I'm just, I'm actually just going to raise it up a little bit. There we go. And then if I right click here, I can say toggle frames. That turns the frames off. So now you can see one is my long side. There are two of them. Here's the outside shape. So it makes it very easy in terms of a, a plan and being able to put this together. So hopefully that's helpful. I will make my cut list macro available, of course. I will uh, put a link in the video below and you'll be able to uh, get in and get that macro. The way that it works is it saves that file as a, as a CSV file. So you will have a spreadsheet with your information in it. I did that macro because I wanted to have a cut list for things. And then I realized it's actually pretty cool if you put it in this sort of drawing. So that's how I would end up with what I need for this today. Unfortunately, the being able to drop that exploded view doesn't work correctly right now. But there is a workaround. I think that's a fairly decent workaround. I think you can recognize the parts from there. And I think that works well enough. Now I can just print this if I just hit this print button. It'll literally print out this is an A4 size or a sorry a letter size because i'm in the us uh, so it's eight and a half by 11 so i can just print it straight out of my printer and i would have that shape so there it is works pretty well i think the the spreadsheet part is awesome it's a workaround but it'll get you there so hopefully you've enjoyed the video if you have give it a thumbs up if you have questions comments or if you found a way to make it work i would be more than happy to hear it I am interested to see if anybody's running Windows 10, if it works on Windows 10. Somebody, I saw something written in a forum saying it worked on Windows 10. I've seen other people make it work. I've actually had it work intermittently, uh, worked once, but then didn't work again after that. So my consistent output is the one I showed you. So if I, if I try to drop in a view, um, that is my projection view of my exploded view. So the way you do it is you, you select your exploded view, tech drawer, and then you do insert projection group. So if you haven't subscribed already, please give us a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. It's free. doesn't cost you anything. And then you'll know when the next video is coming out. You have any uh, suggestions, anything you'd like to see? Let me know. This is honestly, I did this one because people asked for it. Not because that was what I was planning to do as my next video. If you want to buy us a coffee, you can on coffee.com. Or if you want to give us a super thanks, you can certainly do that too. I appreciate that when people do that. It's always nice to receive that. It helps me, keeps me incentivized to, to keep the videos coming. I appreciate it. I appreciate your support. And I'll see you in the next one.